Hey, it's Phil's good man, and as I promised, I'm going to be doing a mouse giveaway. So you have a chance to win one of these four mouses. You get to pick if you do happen to win. And sorry, I'm not going to allow any other mouse requests. Uh, and the reason is just because these are all mouses that I recommend. G Pro Wireless, amazing mouse. It is the most expensive, so if you just want the best value for the contest, you should pick that one. Glorious Model O, really great mouse. I've never tried it but I have a Final Mouse Air 58. It's not my main driver, but uh, Final Mouse Air 58 is hard to find, so we're substituting for Glorious Model O instead. And I also hear really good things that people like better about the Model O as opposed to the Air 58. Zowie S2 Standard Edition. I use the Zowie S2 Divina Blue as my main mouse. It's a really great shape. It's 80 grams, which is not too heavy, and it just really fits well in the palm of my hand and Zowie's coming out with a standard edition version, so that will be available as a choice of prize. And then the G-Wolf Skull, um, it's kind of like an EC2A ergonomic shape. It's got those holes in it, since that's the hype trend these days, is making your mouse super light. Um, and this one's gonna be releasing soon. So I'm gonna have uh, something called a Gleam Contest, and you can enter for a chance to win one of these. If you don't win, please don't be salty. I'm just trying to do something nice for the fan base and the community. And you guys are still the best, you know, whether you win or not. And I'll try to run more contests in the future. So here's how it's going to work. I'm going to be using a platform called Gleam. And this just ensures that a winner is randomly selected and the contest is run in a fair way. Um, be sure to subscribe to me on YouTube. And then um, once you do that, you can go over to the Gleam page and then just click the visit link. And then you can follow me on Twitter for one extra entry. I'm not much of a Twitter guy, but I do want to grow my Twitter following because that's where a lot of the gaming community lives. But to be fair for people who don't use Twitter, you know, you, know, you don't have to enter Twitter, you just get an extra entry if you do. Um, with Gleam, there's a variety of ways to log in, email, Facebook, Instagram, SoundCloud, Twitter, etc. So it's really easy to enter and I'll drop the link below. And it's open worldwide, but if you're not from the US, it may take a bit longer for me to get the product to you. Some of the retailers don't ship to your country, so I would have to ship the mouse to myself first. Even if you are in the US, please be patient. Some of these mice um, are kind of hard to get, but I will get it to you for sure. So now let's jump into the video. I had a lot of fun in my last video going over Crunker settings. So as a follow-up to that, in this video, I'm gonna try to create the most OP Crunker scope image possible. Of course, it's gonna boil down to personal preference. Some people like a little bit more grid lines on their scopes. Just look at games like Overwatch, all the top pro players have like really different custom crosshairs. Uh, but I think that this is gonna be a pretty OP scope image and I'll explain why it works for me. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna open up a new Photoshop document. So 487 width in terms of pixels and 487 height, that's what I see a lot of other people do in terms of their custom scope image size. Uh, resolution doesn't matter because this is not going to print. So we're just going to put a resolution of 1 pixels per inch. So when we have a grid displayed, um, one of the blocks represents 1 pixel. First thing that we need to do after that is create some guides. So 244 pixels vertical. And 244 pixels horizontal. So that's that helps us locate the middle of the screen. And then let's also turn on the grid. Okay, cool. So now I have this grid. Um, and then we're gonna do like um, a red dot that's like surrounding another red dot. And the reason for that is like, when you're scoped in, you're a lot closer to the target. So you don't need your aim to be as precise. Um, so, I have the ellipse tool open. And first we need to select the fill color for it. So in this case, it's gonna be red. Um, and we're not gonna do a stroke to it. The other thing is we'll put it on another layer. And I'm holding shift just so I can draw like a perfect circle. Make that a little bit bigger. Okay, cool. So that looks centered to me. Um, I'm also going to delete this background layer because we don't need it. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six pixels across. Hmm. We can make it a little bit bigger. 
so it's like seven pixels across. Uh, and then I also want to create like a border to the red dot. Um, so I'll take the ellipse tool again, and then I'll reset the fill, and the stroke uh, will just be black. I just want to draw around it. Um, we need to increase the point. And then I'll transform that to just make sure that it's like going all the way around um, the other ellipse that we drew. That looks about right. And I'll hit enter and I can make that, that border a little bit darker by increasing the, the point of the stroke. So give it a little bit more, you know, bold looking border. And then since this is going to be like that bigger crosshair that goes around the um, the default crunker crosshair, we're going to also take that red ellipse and then I'm going to reduce the opacity to like, oops. I'm going to reduce the opacity of the red dot to four, 13. Yeah, about 13. Um, so that way, like, if um, my cursor is aiming at an enemy, I can see through the transparency if I'm really trying to land a precise shot. You don't want a crosshair that's like really big, smack dab in the middle of the screen, that's just going to block your vision. So this is the crosshair. Now after that, we just save it, export as a PNG. Then I'm going to upload it on any file sharing app. Um, you can just create, you're actually, you actually just create like your own Discord channel, upload it to that. Um, open the file, grab the link, and then drop that into Crunker. So we're going to try out this custom scope and test it and see how it works. Now I'm in Crunker and I'm going to install the custom scope. I'll go down to the bottom. I have it pasted on my clipboard already, so I'll try that one more time. Paste that in. Feels good scope.png. So the custom scope image is designed to be used with the custom crosshair. Uh, I use a solid circle, so the solid circle is going to sit in the middle of that scope image. Let's see if it works. Seems to be working properly. You can see the small dot sits in between the big dot. Um, so for like less precise aim, I can use the big dot. And then for like more precise shots, I can use the small dot. The other reason why I picked this type of crosshair, this type of custom scope, is so I don't have to like readjust my mind. Um, when I'm scoped out versus scoped in, it all sort of looks the same. And my preference is a very simple sniper scope. I'm going to try out the scope in free for all mode, see how it does. So far, it's pretty good. So I can use the big dot for close range aiming and then the small one for more precise aim.
Probably don't want to walk through that door. Asking for trouble. Alright, so overall that felt really good. Um, still is going to take me a bit to get used to, but I really like how I'm not constantly making a mental transition between being scoped in and then looking at a red dot. And I get a really good field of view, so it's really easy, me, easy for me to like pre-peak corners or areas where I expect the enemy to be. Try one more time. Kind of fucked up there, but I redeemed myself. I hit them all. Rotate the map a bit. Sometimes it's hard when they're lagging. Hard to hit them. Ah, that guy was just standing still. <laughs> Some of these guys are just standing still, so it makes it very easy. Ooh, Deagle headshot. Okay, I wonder if he's still hiding. Nope. Yeah, quick scopes feel pretty good with this too. Not sure why I switched the pistol there, just kind of habit if I miss the first shot or like them. But not a good habit. If you miss a shot, you don't necessarily want to switch to pistol if he's um, Uzi. Now I'm starting to get a feel for it. It's getting a bit um, snappier. That was good. Sometimes it's hard to hit those flicks like super close range. Oh, 
And using that big red dot, I can hit those quick scopes. So that was pretty good. We got a nice sense of it, and it felt really good to use. It felt pretty natural. And I didn't constantly have to switch between being scoped in and then looking at a red dot. Um, the transparency, I think, helps. Not, probably not quite as much as I thought it would, um, because the game is so fast-paced. But it is nice that it's transparent, so it doesn't completely block the enemy. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you do, please like and subscribe. Be sure to enter my contest and follow me on Twitter. Retweets are appreciated, but of course not mandatory. And I have to be giving out a gaming mouse within a month, or if I hit 1,000 subs, whichever happens first. So, thanks for watching.